Good morning, Good Shepherd people. How you doing? Good, 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 good. Awesome. I'm glad you made it out today. I got a couple things I want to go over really quickly. Look, I got salt on me. I got salt on my shoes. For all of y'all who think that God is worried about what I'm wearing, He's not. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I was just looking up, I was like, where was wrong my white all of my shoes? That's from the salt. I was, you know, trying to salt off the, I almost said driveway, the sidewalk. That's the word. Uh, it says, to all of our wonderful people of Good Shepherd Church, we love you all. And thanks to all from the Belchers and Ford families, thank you. That's a card they sent to us, to all of you all. So to Barbara and Jim Belcher and the Ford family. You know, some of y'all know her, he lost her, she lost her, her son this past week. So that's a they want to say thank you to you all. Um, also, something I want to go over real quickly before we get started. If you notice today, and for the next couple weeks, we have this paper right here. This is our board member nomination form, a.k.a. our deacon nomination form. How many, raise your hand if you know what the word deacon means. Somebody say it. Servant. Amen. Let's say that again all at once. Servant. Servant. Not uh, a person who gets in charge and runs a business and makes all the major decisions. Amen? I just want to be clear this morning. Amen? How many of you want to be biblical or want to, or want to be, I mean, how many of you want to be biblical? Isn't that a good thing to be? It is, absolutely. So anyways, on the back here, look at the back where it has all these qualifications. Somebody say, oh my goodness. Look at your neighbor and say, God doesn't mess around. Have you ever thought about how, is any, am I the only person that ever thought, you know, when Moses, he hit the rock, you know, and you notice that God didn't let Moses go to the promised land? Has anyone else ever read that? Yeah. Moses, man, it's an incredible story. And then, don't you think, I was sitting there, read that a bunch of times, and I, man, God seems pretty harsh, man. You know, one little act of disobedience, and he can't go to the, he actually took him up on a mountain and showed it to him. I don't know if that was better or worse, you know. And it's just like, well, here it is, but you can't go there. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like to be, that's not how I like things. Well, Mike, you know, here's this thing that you really want. You can't have it. But anyways, I believe it's because God has a, a, a very firm foundation and opinion on leadership. Obviously, right? So anyways, I want you to carefully read through that list. And if you can think of anyone in the church that's a member of the church, you've got to be a member for at least two years um, that would meet those requirements, put their name now, you might be asking, do you have to nominate anyone? No. This is just we have our business meeting coming up on the last Sunday of February. Uh, we're doing it that night because we don't want to interrupt prayer. Hey, let me tell you something. We had the highest attendance on a prayer night we've ever had last Wednesday night. Come on. Come on, Jesus. Remember Jesus said, my father's house will be a house of what? Prayer. prayer. I'm going to, man, beat that into you all. Until, that's the last thing you're going to remember, Right? A house of, of prayer. So come and pray. We had 45, I think, here Wednesday night. That's amazing. Come on, for a prayer night, for a prayer evening. Come and pray with us. Come and listen. Come and show up for a little bit. 15, 20 minutes. Come and do your homework. Come read your book. Come spend time in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So anyways, if you have anybody you think you would like to nominate, uh, you can write their name on this. And there is, um, you know, hmm, Miss Shirley's not here today. There should be a box or something at the welcome desk. There is? Okay, there's a box at the welcome desk, and you put them in that little box. So if you have someone you want to nominate, uh, we will be going over that at the business meeting as well. So just make sure you read that list. It's a big deal, right? Amen. So let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you so much, Jesus, for all you're doing in, in Good Shepherd Church, Lord, and all you're doing in, in so many churches around the city, Lord. So, Father, we just pray right now, Holy Spirit, would you would just come and just open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to receive all that you have for us. And, Father, we bless you. We honor you. And I pray that your word would go out today, God, and we stand on the promises that it will not return void in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. Did you, did you get that slide, Pastor Darrell? Okay. Will you put that up, Kobe? Something I want to start doing. We're going to start something here at Good Shepherd Church. It's called a declaration. Somebody say declaration. declaration. How many of you know that the Bible says the power of life and death is in the what? The tongue. Now, what does that mean? This is a whole other sermon. 
But what does that mean? The power of life and death is in the tongue. How many say, say with me, words matter? Look at your neighbor and say, don't speak death. I'm a failure. I'm nobody. I'm not special. I'm worthless. I can't do it. Man, who does that sound like? It sounds like the enemy. It doesn't sound like the Lord. So what we're going to do is, I want everybody to stand at their feet. Y'all better get used to this. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to make some declarations. So if some of y'all who are struggling with believing some of these things, you're going to remember it after this service. So we're going to say this all together, and I'm going to say it with you, all right? Ready, go. I am not who my past experience says I am. I am who God says I am. Hallelujah. Let's do it one more time. That's a good one. Let's go back to that one. Some of y'all need to hear that. I am not who my past experience says I am. I am who God says I am. Amen. Let's do the next one. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost. I have been set free and released from all bondage through what Jesus has done for me. Come on. Come on. Let's do the next one. Pastor, where'd you get this from? Just the word of God. No big deal. (laughs) The third one. Today is the day of my breakthrough. I am free. Let's do that one more time. I like that. And let's celebrate after that one. Today is the day of my breakthrough. I am free. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Come on. My Lord. You can, you can sit down now. Let's show, y'all look good out there. Y'all look ready. <laughs> Damien looked like he was ready to fight or something. He was just ready to go. Come on. How many of y'all could say that felt really good? Man, there's just truth in the atmosphere. There's just identity in the atmosphere. It changes the atmosphere, you know, because a lot of us wake up thinking the opposite of those things, you know, right? The only thing that's going to get you through that is believing what God says about you, right? We sing songs, I am who you say I am, but I don't feel like it, Pastor. Is, was it, uh, what's that real famous pastor that has the biggest church, Life Church? What's his name? Craig Rochelle, there you go. Craig Rochelle, he says, and this is his words, don't quote me. He says, well, get over, he said, those stupid feelings, right? I don't feel like loving my wife today. I don't feel like going, listen, how does that work out for you when you don't feel like going to work? It doesn't work out very well, does it? They don't feel like giving you a paycheck no more, right? So anyways, um, we're gonna go through something that is um, uh, a very elementary, um, but also probably a, a very close in order to the, the most important things that you could possibly know as a born again Christian. Amen. I had a pastor, uh, George Wood, he used to be the superintendent of the Simmons of God. He said that, that he said, what are the ABCs of Christianity that you are um, assuming that your people know? And so he talked about how he didn't learn to read or write until he, I think he was in seventh or eighth grade. And people just assumed that he knew how to do that. So most of us, we would think that we, most pastors and churches is like, man, so what's the pastor's job? The pastor's job is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So what is the work of the ministry? And that's what I would say in 1 Corinthians. It says that you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away. Behold, all things are new. And it goes on to say that you have been given the what? The ministry of reconciliation. So how many of you are in Christ? That's a good thing if you're not. You're going to get saved today. Amen. How many of you are in Christ? And the Bible says for those who are in Christ have been given the ministry. Well, I'm not a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. I didn't, I didn't raise my hand when he asked who's going to be a missionary. What are you talking about? The Bible says that all of us who are born again are in the ministry of reconciliation. What does reconciliation mean? That means reconciling us back to God the Father through Jesus Christ, bringing us back to him through Jesus Christ. That is what every Christian is in charge of. You have a mandate on your life to bring people with you to the Father. As Bill Johnson says, you are alive to gather a harvest. And Jesus said what? You either gather or you scatter. Right? How many of you know that, listen, you either gather or you scatter? Listen, how do you scatter? You scatter by coming to church and being a very religious person, but by going home and doing completely opposite of what Jesus wants. That's how you scatter. That's how you scatter your family. That's how you scatter your children. That's how you scatter your neighbors. 
But if you would start to take on the mantle and the mandate of wanting to serve God and make him known, then you will actually gather a harvest to bring to Jesus. How many of you want to gather a harvest and bring it to the feet of Jesus? There's some also some other good news this morning. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. Jesus said the harvest is ready, it's ripe, but the labors are few. And why is that? Why is it that the labors are few, that the original problem, and why is it still the same issue today? Why is it that we have, we have churches all over the city that are full, way more full than our church, but we got people and we got our crime rates and we got everything going worse than it's ever been. Bruce Kegel, the prosecuting attorney down, listen, this is before those, those shootings that happened the other day. Before all of that, hey, there was an article in Owensboro Times talking about hey, it was the most homicide cases on the docket than he could remember. And why is this? It's been, I believe it's because somehow we, we have taken on this idea that we are supposed to come to church and just that's the end of it. As long as I can get me and my kids to the church building, then we're going to be all right. No, I believe that you are to know God. Number one, first thing you need to do is know him and know him in an intimate way. And the second thing you need to do is to make him known. It's to make him known. It's to share that with you. Listen, if if you have the the antidote to a terminal disease, how many of you know that sin is a terminal disease? You're going to die no matter what. If you have the answer to that, why wouldn't you, why would you hold that in? There's a famous atheist that says, man, how much do you have to hate me not to share Jesus with me? If you really believe Jesus is the only way to heaven, then how much do you have to hate someone not to share that with them? Right? It's getting deep this morning. But listen, this is a vital thing of of being a born-again Christian. As those of us who say, listen, and I'm going to take you down something very simple. How many of you heard of the Romans Road? A few of you, good. The Romans Road is a very simple way to share your faith. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ask you for a raise of hands, but how many people have you actually been able to communicate the actual gospel with in the past year of your life? That's a problem. It, when was the last time we had a gospel conversation with someone? That's too long. That's too long. We've adopted something that, that Jesus never wanted us to have. Jesus never wanted, listen, if your faith is a personal thing and that's all it ever is, is a private thing, then, then you've missed it. And, and a lot of us, we, I hear that from so many men and people in the church, that it's, it's a private thing to me. It was not a private thing to Jesus. It was so much of not a private thing to Jesus that he hung on a cross publicly for it. Amen? He did that for us. He was so not embarrassed that he went all the way to the cross for you. He was not embarrassed of what people were going to think about him. He wasn't embarrassed of, well, they're going to think I'm weird or they're going to think I'm pushy or anything else. But listen, it's life or death. It's heaven or hell. It's that serious. It's that serious, church, that we can no longer be silent. We can no longer say, well, I hope they make it to church Sunday. Listen, some people don't have till Sunday. Some people don't have to Sunday. Listen, it's a sobering all in this room. And it needs to be that way because it's a holy, holy God we serve. And he wants something from us. After we get saved, we should say, man, Father, we thank you that you've saved me, that you loved me and you set me free. And now use me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Like Isaiah. Here I am, Lord. Send me, listen, God's not waiting for you to get all your ducks in a row. God's not waiting for you to get a better job. God's not waiting for you to stop saying stupid things to your friends. He's waiting for you to say, God, send me. He's not waiting for that. He's some of you think, well, I got to get to this place so I can be available or ready to share the gospel. I'm still screwed up. No, you've missed it. His grace is sufficient for you. There's brand new mercies every morning. You don't go around telling people you're perfect and you got it all together. You go around saying, listen, I still mess up. I still make mistakes. But let me tell you about a man who loves me through all of it. Who loves me through all of it. Listen, some of us aren't very excited because we understand that we don't share the gospel. Right? Because we understand that it's probably, it's not, and also I'm here to show you very simply. So if you have a phone or you have a notebook or paper, you need to take notes today. 
Everybody, get your note thing out because you are going to leave this place today knowing how to successfully share the Bible and the gospel with people around you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you can't say, well, I've never been taught how to. Well, I'll teach you how. I'll show you today. I used to do this to the youth all the time. I'd say, well, what do you do when someone questions your faith? How do you even share the gospel? How does that even come about? How do you even say? Because most people would say, I consider myself a good person. Won't that be enough? And what is your answer? What is our answer biblically? What answer do we have in the Bible as Christians when we see people say, well, I'm a good person? How many of y'all been told that? I'm a good person. I don't do drugs no more. I'm good to my kids. You know, I'm good. But what do you say? Oh, okay, well, yeah, you're right. You're pretty good. Don't want to ruffle your feathers. No, but what does the Bible say? Turn to Romans 3.23. We're going to stay in Romans this whole time. That's the first verse you need to write down. Romans 3.23. Come on, this has been on my heart heavy. Heavy. We have thousands of people who carry the name of Jesus in Owensboro, Kentucky. Thousands. We have thousands, Pastor Darrell. There's thousands of people who go here who say, I believe in Jesus Christ. And some of us have never actually left our mouth the words of him, if Jesus or anything, how to even get to him. Somehow we've made it all about getting them to this building so I can tell them. And I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of churches will, will pour into that. A lot of churches love that idea. Well, I, you know, I just gather the biggest crowd, and all I need from you is to bring people. That sounds a lot easier, right? It's a lot easier not to have to do it yourself and have the conversation yourself and just say, well, I'll just bring them to church Sunday. I just got to go out of my way completely to get them to come to church Sunday and then let the pastor take care of it, right? Somebody's getting it this morning. Right? That's easier. Let's just be honest. That is easier than to have that hard conversation with your guy at work that you've that maybe you've been perverted around and you said some things you shouldn't have said around and now you feel like it's too late to say anything. Right? Instead of just manning up and taking that and saying, man, you know what? I've missed the mark, man. I, I, I've, I've screwed up. I've, I've talked about things I shouldn't be talking about with you. But I need to know that your soul is okay with the Lord Jesus. I'm more worried about people being saved and going to heaven than people liking me on this earth. And so should you. So should you. So should you. It doesn't, listen, Jesus was not worried about how he was going to be treated. It, for sharing, his message was very, you know, uh, not unpopular. I mean, they hated it. Right? Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So what do you do when somebody says to you, I'm a good person? You say, well, actually, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10, turn to that. Write that one down as well. You need to do these in order when you're sharing your faith. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. What does that mean? That means what it says. There is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible also says that no one is good, no one, period. And people say, well, I'm a good person. Listen, if, if, listen. God is a very strict law. He's a just judge. He's a just judge. What does that mean? That means if you've told the lie, if you've stolen, if you've fornicated, disobeyed your parents, and you've broken his standard, then you're guilty before him, period, everyone. How many of you have ever sinned before? How many people on this earth have sinned before? Every, listen, if you ain't been around a two-year-old, come hang out with Redding. He will show you how sinful our sinful nature is. I don't have to teach Redding. I don't have to teach him how to disobey, right? When your kids grew up, you didn't have to teach them how to disobey. What did you have to teach them how to do? You had to teach them how to listen. They naturally disobeyed. And now what am I saying? Well, pastor, are you saying that little kids are going to hell? No, that's not what I'm saying. I don't believe that they're, they're, they're consciously available to really understand what they're doing. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we are all born sinful and need a savior. And once you reach that age or whatever you might think it is, that you become accountable for those things. When you start to understand, man, these are wrong things. Romans 3, 23, Romans 3, 10, there's none good, no righteous, no, not one. Romans 5.12. Write that one down. Romans 5.12.
Romans 5.12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, right, Adam and Eve, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Amen? So the people who say, well, I'm a good person, I'm good enough, listen, according to the Bible, that doesn't work. That does not work. All have sinned. Listen, that's the good news. The good news is that Christianity is the only religion that says that, there's, that no one's good enough for God. You can be a Muslim, you can go to Islam, Hindu, whatever it is, and they are literally just trying to do all the right things to get good enough for God. I've heard people say in other denominations or religions, well, I just hope that I've done a lot of good things. When I get to heaven, he'll let me in. That's not the way it works. Good mixed with bad does not make perfect. Did you hear me? If you have any good mixed with any bad, it never amounts to a perfect answer. Never, period. So you have that all have sinned. The creator of the universe is holy. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. We have to understand that God is the most holy, awesome, amazing being that there ever was and he cannot be contacted with sin, period. That's the good news. Uh, Listen, that's the great news. I can wake up every day and realize that I will not be good enough for him, but we'll get there in just a minute. The good news, somebody was. James 2.10, this is not one you need to write down, but it says, for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. That's what the Bible says. So the people that say, well, I haven't really done anything crazy. It's like, listen, if you've just broke it in the most minor way, then you've done all of it in the Lord's eyes. Listen, this is something vital to our faith, especially you young people that are here today, especially people that are young. And you listen, we have this idea that our, our, we, we have our beliefs at church and then we have certain friends that we, we don't really have our beliefs with anymore. That's not right. That is absolutely not right. I believe what that means is actually that we take the name, you know the Bible says, do not take the Lord's name in vain. So I believe there's a little more to the story than just saying his name out of uh, context. I believe that we carry the name of Jesus and you're taking his name in vain when you walk and live and talk a different way that you take the name of the Lord. As a Christian, I'm a Christian. I'm carrying the name of Christ, the anointed one on me, and I'm walking and talking a different way and living a different way. I'm taking his name in vain to the world. Come on, church. Come on. This is an awakening call to us to wake up and to hear that, listen, we got to know that our faith is not this private thing that we keep inside of a box and it's just for me and my family. It's for everyone, church. It's for all of us. All of us. So we had Romans 3.23, Romans 3.10, Romans 5.12, and then now go to Romans 6.23. People say, well, but what's the point? Is sin really that big of a deal? Just a little lie? Just a little uh, drinking? Just a little something? Is it really that major of a deal, Pastor? Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, Come on, somebody, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So listen, the Bible says that literally, if you have sinned, right, what is a wage? A wage is something you've earned from your word. That means literally that your sin, you have earned death. Does that make sense? You're, the wage of sin is death. You were paid in death because of your sin. Does that make sense? That's what that means literally for the wages of sin is death. So people would say, well, it's not that big of a deal, man. It's not that serious. And you say, no, 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 no. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. And that's not just dying and just your life being over. That death is a death in eternal hell. That's what that means. And people say, oh my goodness, here he goes talking about hell. Listen, it's a, it's a real thing, church. And, and, and if you don't understand that, then you're never gonna be moved to ever reach out to anyone. It will never move your heart to reach out to anyone if you think there's only a heaven and everybody just dies and everyone goes there. Then you're gonna, it's gonna be very simple for you to keep your relationship with Jesus private. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible teaches the complete opposite. The wages of sin is death. That's the next verse, that's Romans 6, 23. Disobedience to an infinite eternal God deserves an infinite eternal consequence. Listen, like I said before, God is holy. So write these verses down and then you need to memorize these verses. 
Memorize these Romans. Go home, grab your family, fathers, grab your wives, everything, and, and say, listen, and, and listen, this is how you share the gospel. This is how you walk people through the Bible. Amen? Amen. So you don't have to wonder about what to say at the right time. Go to Romans 5.8. That's your next verse. Write that down, Romans 5.8. It's getting good now. Somebody say, but God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That God demonstrated his love for you. That's when you tell people, man, that sounds kind of harsh, bro. You know, the sin's really that bad. My little lie is going to lead to eternal hell. And you say, no, 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 no. There's good news that God demonstrated his love for you through Jesus on the cross for you. And listen, God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Somebody say still sinners. Let me ask you a question. That's something, a pet peeve of mine. If you're born again, are you still labeled sinner? Some of y'all kind of like, mm, I've always heard that. We always grew up thinking that. We're just a bunch of sinners. Man, that's depressing, right? Bunch of sinners. Hmm. As my Bible says, for many of those who believed, he gave what? Come on, to be called what? Children of God. I don't know about you, but I understand something completely. That he died for me at my worst place. When I was still a sinner, he gave his life for me. He demonstrated his love for me and said, Michael, when you're the worst that you could possibly be, that's the person I came to save. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the person that I love the most. That's the person that I came. That's the person that I thought was worth it. When I was still a sinner, Christ loved me. And something has crept into the church that this devilish thought that somehow after you get saved, then now God's withholding love from you because you make mistakes. Did you catch that? Because somehow you make mistakes and you think, well, God somehow is being distant from you because of your mistakes. And you forget that he loved you in the worst place from the beginning. Hallelujah. That's good news. That's good news. There's brand new mercy for me every morning. There's brand new mercy for you every morning, Norman. Brand new mercy that God wakes you up every morning with a full basket of mercy. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. It's not something to walk around, well, I'm just a sinner and I'm just gonna sin. Listen, if you have this, if you think consciously, I'm just a sinner, guess what you're gonna do? Sin. But my Bible says, if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. If you sin. It's just if you sin. What does that mean? That somehow we got out of this idea that, that we get saved and we're all just sinners. And guess what we do? Well, I'm just a sinner. And then that means that I can just hold my hat on everything I do wrong and blame it on I'm a sinner. Well, I'm still the same kind of dad that I've always been. I'm still the same kind of mom that I've always been. I'm still the same you know, disobedient person. I'm still doing all these horrible things that I've always done because I'm just a sinner like everybody else. Lay off my back. That's how we think. But God has changed that and he's made you a son and a daughter. How many of you heard the term before, born again? Some of you are saying, well, pastor, we know this, but do you really? Do you really? Do you really understand what we're talking about this morning? Because if you think that I'm a sinner, it says while we were still sinners, not a, it's not a future thing. He makes us sons afterwards, church. So you, that's the point, that's the transition point of sharing the gospel with someone. There's the transition verse, right? It got kind of dark at first. You know, you're saying no one's good. The wages of sin is death. But then there's a transition. How many of you know what the word gospel means? The good news, <laughs> You know, the, hey, listen, in order for there to be good news, there must be some bad news. The bad news is that no one is righteous, no, not one, all have fallen short of the glory of God, and without Jesus, you're going to hell. That's the bad news. But Jesus came to give us the good news, that while we were yet sinners, he died for us, and he loves us. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm preaching better than y'all are amen in this morning. Hallelujah. I got that from Pastor Chris. It's a, good, it's a good thing. I think he got it from somebody too, so we'll just keep going. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's when you look at someone and you say, listen, man, even in your sin, even in your wickedness, God loves you so much that he gave his only son for you. That's, that's where it comes. Most of us, we get stuck at that place because then it comes awkward. And this, that's usually when we say, well, you should try to come to church Sunday. That'd be easier than making that next step of saying, you know what, buddy, John, whatever your name is, Jesus loved you so much. God loved you so much that he gave his life for you so you could not perish but have everlasting life. That's what it takes, church. It is a t- it's not going to be this private thing. It's not a private thing, is it, pastor? It's not a private thing, and it never has been. It never was something hidden in the dark. And so he says, listen, man, uh, he demonstrated his love for you. Uh, um, I talked about here recently, and if, if you weren't here, um, I'll get to that in a minute. That's your list verse, Romans 5 eight. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Write that down. Put it in your phone. Come on. Some people would say, well, what do you mean? <laughs> I had a conversation with a man last night. You know when he asked me as a 40-year-old man or something, he said to me, he said, what do you mean by saved? That's literally what he said. And so if you don't know how to actually communicate the gospel through these, then you don't know what to say. You don't know the truth to say to these things. In Romans 10, 9 through 10, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, somebody say Lord. Did you notice it didn't say Savior? Look at that real quick. Did you notice it doesn't say Savior? What does it say? Say it with me. Say, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, Master, Teacher, Lord, you are Master of me. Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Period. So why do we pray? And people say, well, Pastor, we get people to say the sinner's prayer. Listen, the sinner's prayer is not in the Bible. I don't care which copy you got and which one you printed off Google. It's not in there. The sinner's prayer is literally a sinner who understands that their wage of sin is death and their need for God the Father. It's their understanding, however they can get to that place, however you need to pray. Yes, we have prayers here. We go to the jail and we say, repeat after me. If you don't know what to say, here we go. But all we literally say, we confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that he raised him from the dead. You'll be saved. So people might say, well, how can I be saved, Juan? How can I be saved? And you can say, well, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says right here, this is how you can be saved. And you can pray with me right now and confess Jesus is Lord of your life and believe God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. Amen? Listen, do y'all gotta understand something? I'm going to stand before the Father in heaven that literally, that everyone that goes to this church, how you are and the spirituality and the the deep and intimacy that you have with God, I am going to answer for a little bit of that. I am going to answer for that. I'm going to answer to him. And he's going to say, Michael, did you really teach him what to do? Did you really share what I've asked you to share? Did you really try to convey what is important to me? And I want to be able to say, yes, Lord, I did. Yes, Jesus, I did. I didn't care what anyone thought of me. I didn't care if they were going to leave the church, Lord. I didn't care if they wanted a a certain type of message, Jesus. I did what you asked me. And he's asking us to reach people. He's asking us to turn the city around. He's asking us that we will see a year where the homicides start to decrease, where the overdoses start to decrease in Jesus' name. That's what he's asking us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good to us, Jesus. He's been so, listen, he's been so good to you. Don't you want other people to experience that? Come on. He's been so good to you. He's been so good to our church. I want others to step into that. I want everyone to step into that. I remember, remember Paul in, in the book of Acts when he was in front of the king, I think it was Agrippa, and he said to him, he said, you're a madman. He said to Paul, he said, do you think in such little time that you could persuade me to be a Christian? And he said, listen, I wish everyone would. I wish everyone would. I wish that everyone would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. How many of you know that God feels the same way? He wants none to perish and all to be saved. 
listen, some of you have written off family members and things like that. Listen, I understand if you can't be around someone or you know what I mean, and they're, they're you know, dangerous or whatever else like that, but you can make phone calls still, you can still pray for them and you can still speak to them if it's appropriate. <laughs> listen, we gotta get rid of this thought that I've already screwed it up. We just rebuke the devil right now. It's too late, I've screwed it up. Listen, that is from the enemy, that's from the pits of hell. That I, I listen, I've, I've already done too much. I already raised my kids, it's already too late. That's a lie. It's never too late. It's never too late. Well, I've already taught my kid a certain way for the last 10 years, it's not too late. It's not too late. I've already done this certain way, I've already led my family this way, it's not too late. I've already made my brother really mad. I've already shut people out. It's not too late. I've already talked to people at work and I've already been stupid at work and acted immature. It's not too late. It's time to just swallow your pride. Ask the Lord, I mean, Lord, forgive me and empower me by your Holy Spirit to walk in this. Amen. How many of you know that the Bible says it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. If you're thinking, well, I can't do it, you're darn right. It's Christ who lives within you. He's the one who's gonna do it. He's the one that's gonna will and work in you, but it takes you actually taking that step out in faith. He doesn't force us to do anything, church. Romans 10, 13. Is Kobe up there? He's killing it. Come on, man. No, no, Kobe, sorry. I'm oh, I gave all the glory to Kobe. We're gonna just receive your glory, Kobe. It's not even up there. <laughs> Ken is doing a great job. I didn't even give him the verse. He's doing great. Let's read this. <coughs> Write this verse down. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Some other interpretations say whosoever. Right? Somebody say, I'm a whosoever. <laughs> Who's included in everyone? So that's not a trick question. <laughs> Who's included in everyone? Everyone, right? Everyone, everyone. Guess who else is included in everyone? Every Muslim, every Hindu, everybody. Every single one who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not anyone else who calls on the name of Jesus Christ will be saved because the Bible says there is salvation in no other name but Jesus Christ. Listen, church, if that's what we believe, we have to start acting like we believe that. We have to start sharing that like we believe it. We say, well, that person, he doesn't really believe like I do. Well, guess what? If you believe that the way you believe is the only way to heaven, that's pretty important, right? It's the most important thing ever. Lecrae, he said, listen, he said, if I die uh, believing in, in, in Jesus and I find out it's not true, then I guess I wasted my life and I had joy and peace and happiness. He said, but if you die, you wasted eternity. Right? Listen, if, if, if Christianity, some people say, well, you know, pastor, what if it's not true? Well, listen, uh, God has done too much in my personal life. It's not because someone told me so. It's not because my daddy told me so. It's not because someone convinced me of it. It's because God has transformed me from the inside out. Right? You couldn't talk me out of it. <laughs> I, had, I had a friend here recently and we had a conversation and he was saying, you know, Mark, do you really believe in the Virgin Mary and, and Noah's Ark? And he was just really just kind of, you know, whatever. And I said, you know what, man, we were in the parking lot. I said, you know what, you know me. You know me when I was on drugs. You know me when I was out of my mind. You know me. And look at all the Lord has given me. I'm married. I have two beautiful kids now with my wife. That God's given me this church. God has somehow ordained me to be a part of this whole place. And I looked at him and I said, how do you think all this has happened? And he looked at me and he smiled because he, he said, coincidence? <laughs> well, there's a, you're gonna have a lot more faith believing in that. You're gonna have to have a lot more faith believing that this is just a coincidence. <laughs> just a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's real life, isn't it, Derek? He changes you from the inside out completely and fully and he loves you through it. Amen? Whosoever calls in the name of the Lord. So you get to that place with that person, you say, man, we'll pray right now for you to call on the Lord. I was on the phone last night with a man for an hour that I don't even know. And I won't go into all the details, but, um, and I was just working and I was just, we've had a crazy week and, um, 
and I was just talking to him, and he's the one that asked me. I said, you know, the, the only way that my life changed is because of Jesus Christ. And I was telling him I'd be saved, and he's the one who asked me. He said, well, what do you even mean by saved? And I thought, wow, like what a childlike answer. Like that's a beautiful place to be. There's no pride in it. You know, there was no assuming in it. There was no coming to God with the answer. Just said, what do you mean by saved? And that's when it hit me that, man, most people probably don't know what to say to him. And what I mean by saved is what we talked about at the beginning. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved from your sin. Saved from you. How many of you know that the Bible says, it doesn't say deny the devil, pick up your cross and follow me. It says deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. All your selfish desires, all your stuff that that wars against what the Spirit wants in your life, deny it, kill it. Some of y'all need to hear that this morning. You're wondering why you got to such a hard place and all of a sudden you're, you're stuck in a place. It's because the flesh has been rising up and you haven't killed it. You have to kill the flesh. You have to cut it off completely. I was thinking the other day, I said, man, I don't ever struggle with thinking about like, you know, I'm accidentally gonna cheat on my wife this week because I have such a strong conviction about that, right? But why don't I have such a strong conviction about everything else? And it hit me and I was like, man, why don't I have such a strong conviction about certain things I say or my disobedience or they're taking care of my health? Why don't I have such a strong conviction when all of them are displeasing to the Lord? It's because we like to categorize things, right? Well, that's too bad. I ain't gonna do that. Well, sin is the same in the Lord's eyes, all of it. You know, we, we look down on people who, you know, do drugs or do crazy things. But listen, your lies or your pride or anything else is just as bad before the Lord. Actually, the Bible says that pride is an abomination to him. It doesn't say drinking is. Some of you are saying, so you hear that? Pastor said I can go drink. It's not what I said. <laughs> not at all. Not at all what I'm saying. How many of y'all wrote down the verses or you have them in your phone? How many of y'all could say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I already knew how to share the gospel. I've been doing this for years. Come on. A few, hey, so a few of you out there said, hey, listen, that's called confidence. That's not pride. If it's true, you can say yes, man. Maddie used to come when, when I first got saved, and Maddie would come to pick me up and stuff because I was a loser and uh, didn't have a car or anything and uh, just got saved, right? And uh, so Maddie would come pick me up, and all the time she'd be waiting for me. And most of the time it was because what? I was in the elevator, and I was talking to people about Jesus. Didn't care. Let me tell you something. We'll end on this tonight. Can the worship team come? The first thing you need to do, church, pay attention. Don't look at them. You'll be all right. The first thing you gotta do is to know him personally and intimately and fully. The second thing you have to do, listen, a lot of the church has stopped there. I'm saved, I'm good, I'm ready to go. No, 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 no. Now it's to make him known. You need to know him and you need to make him known, church. You need to know him and you need to spread, you need to gather a harvest to bring to the feet of Jesus. Yes, and listen, it's only by the power and blood of Jesus Christ, or he's, listen, Everybody stand to your feet. Come on. Listen, you have the keys now. You have the verses. You have the heart. Listen, all you have to do to conjure up like this thought that I can do this is to realize that God saved you. Right? Knowing that God saved you and was merciful to you should compel you to want to share that with someone else. Knowing that there's someone out there who doesn't have that. And let me tell you, it's not just someone, it's everywhere. It's that awkward conversation when you're at lunch today that have you ever thought that maybe your server is not saved? Have you ever thought that? Most likely, probably not, right? And what is it gonna take, church? I talked to you recently I was working at Swedish Match and and, and I had a, a young guy who I'd share the gospel with And I would share everything with him about what God has done for me. I would share all the scriptures with him. But when it got to that point of saying, man, let's confess he's Lord right now and let's get you saved, I dropped the ball. Because I was like, man, I don't wanna be weird. I don't wanna be pushy. I don't know, that's really awkward to do. We're right here in the factory. (laughs) 
and I talked to you guys about that. He looked at me and he said, Michael, he said, if I'm gonna live for Jesus, he said, I wanna do what you're doing. He said, I wanna do what you're doing. I would like to, he said, if I was gonna do it, I'd wanna be like what you're doing because I don't know very many people who are living it like that. He said, I wanna be like that. And I remember thinking, I told him, I said, man, that's the best place you can be. That's the best way to come to Christ and saying, the only way I wanna do it is if I'm all in. The only way I wanna give my life to Jesus is if I'm all in. And I didn't have that moment with him, church. And I share this with you just to be vulnerable and to show you. And listen, he passed away that Saturday. He didn't make it to church Sunday. Now, I'm not gonna tell you his name, but it's in my phone. I still have his number on my phone to remind me that some people don't have to Sunday. Some people don't have to Sunday. Some people don't have tomorrow. You never know. And I didn't take that moment of saying, man, I knew what the Bible said too. I knew it said that if you confess he's Lord and believe in your heart, you'll be saved. I knew that whosoever calls the name of the Lord will be saved, but I dropped the ball. But we don't have to anymore, amen? I want that to hit you hard this morning and to realize it's that serious. And I was sitting there this yesterday and I was talking on the phone to this gentleman and I just felt this is the power of the Lord just came on me and I just start to boldly proclaim the gospel to him completely. And, and then I was like, I was kind of lost. I was like, uh, you know, what do you want to do? They want to come to church tomorrow. I was like, oh, I can't say that I'm preaching differently. And I stopped and I said, man, I told him the story. And I said, man, do you want to? I said, man, I don't want to leave this conversation without giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And it was, it was just kind of funny because I'd love to tell you that he was just like, yeah, come on, I'll do it. But he actually was just like, man, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't really know, man. And I was like, can I just pray? And he was like, he was real confused by that too. He's like, man, well, you want to pray right now? Like, what are you talking about? I said, yeah, can I just pray for you right now? You know, and so I just prayed and I prayed that God will just, just show up in his life and that God, that he already did last night and I prayed that God will continue to. So would you pray with me that he would make that decision? But I can sleep good last night knowing that I was bold enough to say, man, do you want to get saved right now? Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Yes, yes. And I'm telling you, I got that clear conscience. And if I didn't say that or have that conversation, I'd be sitting here with you this morning regretting the whole thing. Because guess what? You know, he's not here right now. That's the reality. The man I talked to last night is not here. And I invited him here. But more importantly than that, Noah, I invited him to the cross. I invited him to Jesus. Listen, church. All of my heart. If we start to understand what our real goal is, is as a church and as Christians, then we will see God bless and fill this house. But until we understand, do y'all remember about a year and a half ago, I prophesied something over our church and some of y'all thought, well, he's just being weird. That's not gonna come true. I prophesied this. I said, Good Shepherd Church will only grow by our motivation to make disciples. Some of y'all are thinking, oh Lord, there he did it again. I said, the church will only grow by our motivation in our hearts to actually make disciples in our lives. I don't want the church to grow in number, just to grow in number. I want it to grow in souls. I want it to grow in salvations. I want it to grow and that you will be reaching the city. And you would come to me and say, Pastor, my friend gave his life to Jesus right there at AK Steel last night. That's what we want. And yes, I will continue to share the gospel if you bring them here. Because I know the culture we live in, some people will just show up at church. Prayer team come. You know, that, that just really hit me, church. I invited him to church, he's not here.
Just close your eyes. Oh, Heavenly Father, we love you, Jesus. I just want you to think about it. Everything that's been said today, whatever has really moved your heart today. Listen, if pride and anger or any kind of thing has rose up in you, you need to kill that stuff right now. Just kill that. Shut that off completely. Submit to what the Lord is trying to do in your heart and your life. there's anybody here today that can say, I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He needs to be Lord of my life. He needs to take control and take over. If that's you, I just want you to lift up your hand right now, right where you are. Anybody at all can say, come on, I see their hands. Anybody else say, I need Jesus to be Lord of my life. I need to be saved. Amen and amen. Here in a moment, when I call everybody down for prayer, if you raised your hand, I want you to come down and we're gonna pray for you. We wanna pray with you personally. So be bold, if you raise your hand, I want you to come down here. Listen, if you need healing in your body, I want you to come. If you have pain in your body right now, I want you to come, we wanna lay hands on you, we believe the Lord can heal you. But even more than that, who could honestly say today that I'm gonna share the gospel? Come on. I will share the gospel. That my faith will no longer be a private thing. If that's you, I just want you to lift your hands to the Lord. It's no longer gonna be a private thing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna worship through one more song and we're just gonna ask the Lord to empower us by His Spirit. In Acts chapter 1-8, it says, you will receive power when the Spirit comes upon you to be a bold witness. Listen, there's the good news. So listen, if that's you that says, man, I need that power to be a bold witness, I want you to lift your hands right now. I need that power. I'm too shy. I'm not, I'm very, I'm not very bold. I don't really speak out. I need the power of the Holy Ghost to come upon me. If that's you, I want you to lift up your hands to the Lord. And we're going to sing through this worship song. And if you need prayer, I want you to come. And I just want you to pray, God, I need that power. We're going to sing through this song. Just pray, God, I need that power. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit, Lord. I need that power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God.